Hello everyone, this is going to be the second video I've ever done on urban geology. I would like to do more of these, but I rarely get the chance. The first one was Indiana. This is actually a place called Lamont, Illinois. It is just south of the Des Plaines River. Now, most of you probably have no idea where that is, but I'm going to put a Google image here for you in a second, and we're going to go over shortly i'm going to take you through and show you some of the bedrock geology but first let's get through this i'm going to this should be around five minutes okay so here's the google image map all right you can see that you have the Des Plaines river you can see some highways this map is from may of 2023 so it's not that old now i did do a geologic map of this area of keep it all forest preserve you can actually see it it's more of like the center lower part of this map and you're going to see it here and what you'll notice is a lot of things didn't exist i made this map in 2011 that was 14 years ago now you'll see that there was a highway there called i-355 just in the middle to the right of the middle right of the map it wasn't there then it was not built until much recent more recently now the map here i have i-55 in the upper left that's actually an error that's joliet highway i-55 is where it is on the map or on the google map that yellow northeast trending road there but let's get into the stratigraphy a little bit. That's a map, and as you can see, that's the map of the bedrock and the glacial stuff. We're not going to visit the glacial stuff. So we're going to stick with the stuff here that says Silurian. And as you can see, you have two series here. The stratigraphy of the Silurian in both Indiana and in Illinois is really a mess. Now, when this stuff was originally, the, the guy that classified this stuff re originally in the 70s, he's still alive. And he, and I used to, you know, pick his brain once in a while, but that was really before we had a North American stratigraphic code. So you can see we have Niagaran series and Alexandrian series here instead of groups, which is what we really should have. But then we got formations. And as you can see, we have, we're going to see the sugar run is mainly what we're going to see. We're not going to see the Racine but it is present, or the Joliet. So from the youngest Silurian unit, you have the Racine Formation. Below that, you have the Sugar Run. Then you have the Joliet Formation. We're not going to talk about the Kankakee, Elwood, and Wilhelmi, because they're not in the map area. Now, we're going to zoom back out so you can see this again, because I'm going to show you the cross-section. You can see it here, A to A prime, that big, that black line that kind of cuts across the map there from northwestish to southeastish all right now i did a cross section because i always do those for my geologic maps at least one this area is not very big i think it's just under five square miles sorry everything's an imperial but here is the cross section i will put this map in the description if you want to purchase it digitally it won't be that much but anyway you can see the cross section here it's 12 times vertical exaggeration. So this is not the kind of topography you're going to see. Why do we do this? Well, we do this in areas like this. From what you can see here, you see this is a cross section into the earth and you see you have very, what most geologists will say in 101, layer cake geology this whole area is very layer cake there's no major faults there's there's no folds nothing like that you're actually i believe you're up on the kankakee arch here which is a very wide broad structure of poor relief so this is typically what you would see but i want to show you i'm going to take you through lamont and show you some things but why don't we just do this at a one-to-one -one? why don't i just do this with no vertical exaggeration you want to know why because this is what it would look like <laughs> here i took away all the vertical exaggeration you can't see anything you can see that there's a little bit of topography and it's going to slowly zoom in but you really can't make anything out you can't really get any information from this map i would basically have had to map this all as just like solarium with a little bit of glacial stuff like even the man-made stuff that's the gray year and the orange henry formation the brown henry they're, they're both henry formation 
is you get these don't even show up on this. You can basically just see a little tiny bit of the Silurian. You can the Racine probably stands out the most. But anyway, that's it. I'm gonna take you to Little Mont, Illinois right now and show you some of the stuff around there. This is me driving along the south side of the Plains River, looking south. You can see the Racine Formation exposed in the cliffs here. Here we're coming up on the fire department. Okay, when I did my Roadside Geology Book of Illinois, this cut was in a grocery store. It's no longer a grocery store. The building hasn't changed much, but this is mostly Racine Formation. I believe with a little bit of Sugar Run exposed. The Sugar Run used to be called the Athens Marble. It was quarried here. This was a little quarry. And a lot of the buildings here are made of this stuff, all right? We're gonna explore some of it in detail, but I just wanted to show you this outcrop right here. This is also looking south. This building now I'm looking west but you can see right here the exposures in the cliffs now I'm gonna take you downtown for those of you that like the little history of the name of the town Lamont was originally called Kipitoff where you get Kipitoff preserved from after the Potawatomi chief uh, the, there was a post office established in 1840, all right? And that's when the name was changed to Athens. That's where we get the Athens marble. And that's when a lot of this stuff was really quarried, mid-late 19th century. It became Palmyra before becoming Lamont. And there isn't much information on that between Athens and Lamont. Just that it was named Palmyra. It could have been a year, could have been 10 years for all I know, I don't know. But once it was changed to Lamont in 1850, uh, it, the name stuck. It's been that way ever since. This top part, that's retaining wall. There is bedrock under that, but that's been put there. That is natural. So the top of that water spews out is in place bedrock. This over here only has a little bit on top that's not in place. It's the darker stuff, not too much under that top soil. The rest is natural. Looks like that wall over there. And I did the Illinois book uh, 15 years ago or so. This was not the easiest place to get to. But yeah, you see over there, that's all native, natural in place bedrock. This stuff right up here. Let's see if I can get my finger right. Yeah, it's not. The lighter stuff is. And over here, this is all retaining wall. Now there is bedrock behind this. No, but this right here is retaining wall. The stuff with the ledge is in place bedrock. This stuff is made from the local bedrock, which is mostly Sugar Run Formation, which is called the old Athens Marble, or it's Racine, which is right above that, which is the same rock at Thornton's Quarry. But you can see this is very crystalline looking you can even tell from here this is dolo stone okay dolo stone is not metamorphic it's altered sedimentary rocks it's altered chemically so that's why it's not metamorphic and you can see beautiful little bits of quartz here and look at these guys i can't tell if those are quartz or calcite it's calcite oh here we got some better ones look at that Look at that right there. And then you look at some of it, this red in it is typical of the sugar run. And as you can see, there's bugs, there's little vescules, there's little tiny holes. But yeah, this red colorization is typical of the sugar run. 
this is also typical this gray color but it's also typical of the Racine and if it was pulled from near the surface this is the top of a bedding plane it tends to have this yellowish texture to it Let's see if we see any fossils no uh, no I don't I see trace fossils I see stuff that looks like mud trails you see them they're all over here right here right here but i don't see any like trilobites or anything like that the sugar run tends to not have fossils in it you won't find any you might find an occasional one but a lot of these vugs are probably them oh, fossils have weathered out and this right here this is what we call styolitic bedding look at that i believe that's from pressure solution and i have the feeling i don't know if this is the top or the bottom of a bed this is more typical of the Racine, but you do see it in the Sugar Run. Let's see this bedding plane here, this red modeling. Yeah, that's Sugar Run. This probably is too. This is, yeah, all these vugs like this are probably weathered out fossils. But yeah, and then come over here. Oh, what do you got there? Yeah, this is a very coarse crystalline. But, uh, yeah, I love the stylitic bedding. It's, it's, uh, that you don't think of beds forming these jagged patterns like this, but they can, and they do, like this. On this side, you do see what tends to look like trilobite fragments. Things like our imprints here. Uh, mostly still trails, like this worm trail right here. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing much of anything. Uh, uh, oh, oh. But first of all, worm trails, you see them? These could also be trilobite trails. They might be those two. No, no, they might be. I don't know. I can't, I'm not a trail expert, but I can recognize it. You see this mud in here? You see that? It's it's lime mud, but that's not what I wish. Look at this bad boy. Look at that. That is a cephalopod. This is one that had the outer tubular straight tubular shell it's an imprint the fossil's gone but man i was not expecting that here and then you can see more burrows or tracks uh these are tracks i'm pretty confident these are tracks uh yeah so probably trilobite but yeah that's a good one wow yeah sugar run Something else I want to note, it does not have chert in it. It's not cherry at all. Uh, the above we're seen in the inter-reef rock is, it's one of the ways to differentiate it. Ah, it's good sugar, sugar run right there. The entire Silurian nomenclature of Illinois is just a mess, but it's not as bad as Indiana's. <laughs> so, oh, look at this one. Oh no, that's just tool wear, Never mind. But, uh, huh. Oh, what is this? Oh, I wasn't expecting to see this here. Yeah, it is. Okay, this I don't think is just soot weathering. You don't see a lot of that around here. This is what we call asphaltum. It's just like an oily substance that often appears on bedding planes in, in the reef rock and inter-reef rock. Uh, not so much in the sugar room, but in the Racine, it's everywhere. Here's some more in cross section. So this is natural. Oh, look at these pink crystals here. That's awesome. Huh. That's the asphaltum, but this is uh, probably sugar run. But this is definitely an old fossil. You can tell because the crystals don't typically grow like that out here. So that's probably some feature of the fossil that fell out and the crystals grew around it. 
Anything interesting up top here? Oh, this is weathered style medic bedding. This is typically more as you see, smoothed out, weathered. An outcrop, the one down there is just a really good one. But yeah, you can tell this had stylitic bedding. You see how wavy and bumpy that is? See? But that's a bedding plane too. And uh, a lot of the stuff you can't tell where bedding is. But obviously this is a bed and this is typical thickness of the sugar run. It's one bed and it doesn't have laminations or bedding within it. This is just one solid bed. Yeah, that's more fossil type crystals growing. Uh, this definitely, here's something, this is how you see bedding. This is definitely a cross section. You can see this is a de different bed, very vascular. Uh, right here, these are probably weathered out fossils. This is probably a little bit of a fossil lamination, a really thick one or very thin bed. I haven't measured it. And then you have your vugs here. is the more natural part of it. You can see the bedrock down there at the water line and all that other nice stuff. It's Plains River Road. Oh wait, let's go down here. Here's that bridge. It's private property over here. It's all Zingas, I believe, or somebody else's. But just want you to see, you can see bedrock there. You can see the water outflow. You can see the town of Lamont up top there, too. And so there's that the bridge here. Uh, it's directly in bedrock. You can see there's a little little tiny bitty outcrop right over here see it right there that little ravine comes down and then it continues right under that stuff's in place right there see where it goes out to the canal obviously that piece of concrete metal on it's not natural but yeah it's right on bedrock and then it gets covered again but it is there <laughs> 